All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Randy Stroman, who is in Dallas, Texas. How are you doing, Randy? I'm doing very good. Thank you. Excellent. And I'm here, as usual, in San Diego, a humid San Diego, unusually, but hey, you can't have everything. So Randy works with Fortune 500 companies, entrepreneurs, startups, nonprofits, uh, seeking to, to grow, expand their outreach. And he has, uh, he has decades of hands-on senior level experience as a, as a leadership and a relationship coach. And what we wanted to talk today about was the importance of values in, in business and, and in sales, um, et cetera. And I think in some ways, Randy, we live in a we live in a very strange world today where everything is shortcuts and instant gratification and you know grabbing as much as you can as fast as you can so in some ways the concept of values almost sounds outdated well it may sound outdated but the fact is everything that comes to us in life is going to come through our values mm -hmm. you can't shortchange that process um, we all have values we all have different values, but your values are going to determine your outcome every time. So when you, so let, let's baseline this a little bit. So when you, what would your definition of values be for, for those who are listening? Well, a value is, I mean, there's many different theories on it. You know, uh, my, my personal belief is that values are kind of that inner compass, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, uh, that line that, that tells you how you want to choose, how you want to react. Um, and, and that's why it's so vitally important because most of the businesses that I work with and, and individuals that I've worked with in coaching, they're, they'll come to me and say, well, R Randy, we're just not getting results. Mm -hmm. and, and I will smile and chuckle and say, well, tell me what's happening and they'll give me the details of it. And I say, well, that sure sounds like results to me. <laughs> you're just not getting the results that you want. Right. Uh, we're all getting results. The question is, are we getting the results we want? And so then they'll realize, okay, well, we're not getting the results we want. And I think that it's because a common response is it's, it's our culture. We just, we just have such a toxic culture. And so they think that culture will drive the results. And that's certainly true, but they don't always understand what drives that culture. Mm -hmm. And to, to change your culture, you have to go all the way back to a progression that starts with your values. Because your values are going to drive your thoughts. Your thoughts will drive your actions. Your actions over time become habits. Your habits will reveal your character. It is your character that builds your culture. And then your culture drives the results that you're getting. So if you want to get different results... And you have to go all the way back to the beginning of that process and you have to address it at the values level. But the challenge with that, of course, is I can't tell you what your value should be. Right, right. And so values have to be discovered. And then when they're discovered, then we have to embrace those values and understand the diversity that exists between us and find those common areas where we can do our best work together. Yeah, so it's, so there's there's a lot to un, unpack there, but let's start back at the beginning. Uh, so identifying what your values are, uh, this is something that I would guess a lot of people don't consciously do, and and that's why, as you say, with with organizational culture tends to grow up organically, and it just happens over time rather than being being driven off anything, you know, concrete, if you like, or not so much concrete, but anything deliberate. So when you work with people, what kind of process do they go through in actually figuring out their own values? And, and do you ever have the situation where somebody goes and figures out their values and then goes, wow, those aren't the values I really want? Well, I mean, it's, it's true. Um, you know, people will discover that they're and I wouldn't say so much it's not the values they don't want. I think it's more that they're allowing other things to take precedence over right. what they truly value. Mm -hmm. And and so the, the it's really the process of identifying what your core values are. And uh, I use different assessments to do that. Um, I, I, I will do it in a group. Um, I've done it in groups as, as large as 500 people where I will ask them a series of questions. And at the end... 
I can identify what their core values are. And then we test that theory and it, it works itself out. And then we go through an exercise where we'll have several people from an organization come forward and they'll list all the values that they have. And um, for example, I will, I will list about 175 different possible values that they choose from. And in a room of even say 500 people, it's, it's very rare to have more than two or three people that would pick, let's say the same three core mm -hmm. values. And so we really are diverse. But then when we get down to it and we start to see how their values will dovetail with our values, then we start to see some synergies appear. And so the first thing I would do with an organization is let's first identify everyone's core values. Let's then identify the true core values of the organization from the people that make up that organization. Because one of the biggest challenges that corporations have is they've all got values. They post them on the wall. They sure. put placards up. But the problem is they stay on the walls. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to take those from the walls and put them into the hearts of the people where they can actually do some good. And so that's a process of identifying those values and then seeing how that fits within the core values of the organization. And then we focus a majority of our culture activity and, I, and, and our focus and training in those core areas where we have our commonality. So what are some of the, uh, the values that you've seen, the company values that you've seen that are, co are more common to high-performing organizations? Are there some that you can identify that companies who have these set of values or this subset of values tend to perform better? Well, it's not so much that one value performs better than another. I think it's more about are you true to your true core values? Mm -hmm. Because um, again, organizations will all list their values. And one of the, the, the roadblocks I run into in working with organizations is, you know, we, we have, here's our core values and we live those values. The reality is when you get into it and find out day-to-day -day business, they don't. Mm -hmm. And so it's really not so much having a set of core values that seems to be unique to those that are successful, almost like Jim Collins' approach of good to great. You know, there was sure. a set of circumstances mm -hmm. that were uh, inherent in every good to great company. Well, with values, it's not so much that. I think it's more the fact that you haven't truly identified your true core values and you're not living those values. And when you do that, when you're true to yourself, you know, like Jim Collins said, you know, what do you do better than anyone else? What, what, what are you most passionate mm -hmm. about? And what can drive your economic engine? Well, values are much the same way. What are you most passionate about? What do you do better than anyone else? And are you truly living those values? Mm -hmm. And how does that come into play? Because most companies will say they're values driven. They're really strategy driven. Mm -hmm. And strategy is good. We need it. Without strategy, we're going to fail. But there has to be this, this synergy, this balance between values and strategy. And the two have to come together. So how does that how does that manifest itself? So say that we go through a process and we establish at the end of the day that these are the values that the company um, wants to live by. How do you then ensure that the organization as a whole lives those values? Because as you say, it's an easy thing to say, and you can put it on a you can put it on a, a placard on the wall, and you can put it at the end of all your communications and all of that. But how do you actually get it to become part of the DNA? of the company? Well, it's got to be top mind awareness. Mm -hmm. and that's first and foremost, as with anything, you know, the vision of an organization is only going to be clear as we keep casting that vision. Um, and so if, you know, I'll go into uh, many companies and ask them, what's the vision of, of this company? And if I interview 100 people, I will get somewhere around 75 different right. answers. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a, a lack of, of casting that clear vision, but then there's also the, the process of understanding how values come into that. So one of the things I will do once we identify core values is I, I have people actually take and print out their three core values, frame it, put it up in their office or their cubicle, mm -hmm. depending on their structure and their level in the organization. And now when I sit down with you to have a conversation, you've got your sign behind you. But let's just say that we're in your office and I'm looking straight behind you. And as I'm talking to you, I'm seeing your three core values right behind you. 
And so now I know how to frame my conversation in a language that is going to be understandable by you. I am not approaching you from my values. I'm mm -hmm. approaching you from your values. And that's one of the first things I do. And then a second is to work with human resource departments and help them to train their leaders, their managers, their executives um, from, from top down to have a values-based conversation versus a performance-based conversation. Because mm -hmm. so often we have performance-based conversations and performance can be very subjective. Now, values can be too, but if I sit down with someone and say, here is what we've observed, this is not in alignment with your own core values, and it's not in alignment with the values of the organization, so together we have to come up with a plan of how we can bring you back into alignment. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with a, a plumb bob. It's an, an old-fashioned term, but it's how construct, uh, con contractors used to create straight plumb walls. They mm -hmm. would drive a nail at the top, hang down a string with that metal torpedo that had a pointed end on it, and gravity would cause that plumb line to be perfectly straight up and mm -hmm. down, perfectly plumb. So they would put a mark at that bottom. Now they know they've got it. Now today we use modern levels with sure, sure. and so forth. But, but the concept is that when you're in alignment with those two lines, everything's going to be strong and good. If we deviate either way, then we're going to be out of alignment and the wall becomes very weak. It's the same with an organization. So if we can identify where people are out of alignment, and alignment can be both positive and negative. Sure. Let, let's take the value of hard work, mm -hmm. for example. If, if I'm in a negative deviation, I'm stealing time from my company. I'm, yep. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, as, as some would say, I'm sandbagging it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just putting in my time. I'm watching the clock. I'm waiting for the moment that I mm -hmm. can punch out and go home. Now, that's, that's negative. But positive deviation is just as damaging to an organization to where it's all about results, it's all about the work, it's nothing about the people, and it causes just as much damage to an organization as someone who's stealing time. Mm -hmm. and so what we need to do is to realize that we wanna bring that back into alignment with the values, and we have to have a set of behaviors that help us to know when we're in alignment with that value. And so that's really the key is, getting that to become inherent in the organization. So instead of talking to you and saying, well, you really did a poor job on this, it's not about the poor job. It's about what value did we, did we not come into alignment with? And here's the steps to follow to get back into alignment. Now your performance improvement plan is very, very specific to the needs of the organization, and it's in alignment with the values of the organization. Yeah, and, and you touched on something there that obviously in order for that to um, work, you have to, number one, it has to be to all levels of the organization, but you have to train people in, in how to have those conversations because that's not something that be, it comes naturally to any of us, right, to have a, a, a values-driven conversation and, um, you know, bring things back into alignment. I mean, we're more used to going, hang on, let me have a look here at your latest perform, your data and this, and it's much easier to have that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. so, so how do you train people to be able to, especially managers and that, to be able to have values-driven conversations? Yeah, I, I would just add to your, your analogy that it may not feel usual, but it is very normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In other words, when we, when we come into alignment with our values, it's, it, it, it brings a certain peace, a satisfaction, a fulfillment that no amount of performance can do by itself. Mm -hmm. And so we, we know we're being true to ourselves and we know we're being true to the organization. And so the process of, of getting that in place, uh, one of the tools we use is having uh, regular roundtable discussions where people come together in small groups and we review the core values of the organization and we do it in a roundtable format. So there's a little uh, training that goes along with it. We just kind of read that out loud together, taking turns. 
And then there's a self-assessment that they do at the end to say, how am I doing today on this value? Mm -hmm. Because values leak over time. Sure. You know, if we don't reinforce them, like anything else in life, um, they, they tend to leak. And that, so we want to reinforce that process. And we want that process of self-assessment because the process of self-assessment is an inside-out learning. And it's far more effective than outside learning. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all for training classes. I do sure. a lot of training classes. And there's a place for that. But the most effective learning is when it's two-way communication to where everyone has a voice and everyone's voice matters. So, so um, Roundtable is that tool. Yeah, so can you give me a couple of examples, not, not company names, but just general examples of where you've seen transformations happen and, and what that transformation looks like? Well, the one that comes to mind right now, I think of an organization that um, had about 40 employees and they were on the verge of, of financial collapse. They were losing money. Uh, they had over a 400% turnover rate. So they're turning their staff almost four times a year. Mm -hmm. And it was obviously devastating. You can't get any training, you can't get any you know, work uh, knowledge. Um, there's no teamwork. And, and it was really just a very toxic environment. And so after a few months of working this program into that company, we started to see some light. And it took about two months. And so it took a lot of faith on the part of the ownership to keep investing in the program. But once they started to see the results, it became very apparent, not just inside the company, but also outside to, to customers and clients. Clients were starting to say, there's just something different about this place. I can't really put my finger on it, but, but it just feels better. And that's because people were starting to come into alignment with their values. Now, the outcome of that, a year later, uh, when, when they'd done nothing else in the business except working on values for a year, uh, we saw their year-over-year -year profits increase 466%. Wow. And so it had dramatic effect. Um, there's a Harvard study that was done uh, sometime uh, back that found that over a 10 year period, culturally positive, culturally driven companies were able to increase their profits by 765% over a 10 year period. Now point to anything mm -hmm. that can get that kind of a return. I, the list is going to be very small. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so values definitely will drive the bottom line. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Well, listen, this has, been, uh, this has been great, Randy. We're bumping up against the end of our time here. But before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, the work you do, and how they can find out more about you. Well, they can uh, reach me at uh, Randy at randystroman.com. That's S-T-R-O-M-A-N, Randy at randystroman.com. And uh, if somebody's interested, what we would do is we would just sit down, talk a little bit about what's going on in your organization, understand a little bit about what you'd like to see happen. And then we almost always start with an assessment that is organization wide. And that is from the top down. Um, we firmly believe that if the king is not involved, the kingdom will not uh, follow. And so we would do a top-down assessment of the values of the organization to see how that fits within the strategy of the organization. And then uh, from there, um, we would act appropriately. And, you know, it's, we use similar tools, but the response is, not, is, is, is dependent on that organization. So, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Um, this has been a really interesting conversation. And as you heard from Randy there, there is true economic return on getting your values um, sorted out and actually getting them, cult you know, getting your culture aligned around it and continuously revisiting it. So again, thank you, Randy. Uh, it's been a great conversation. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM, CEO for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.